Hi there, and welcome to this week's wild walk right on the trail in Williamson Valley, in amongst the junipers and pinon pines, and at the base of Granite Mountain, the big massive back there. I don't know if you can see, it's still got some snow on the north side. But down here at the base, it is really feeling like summer. I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt and that was that was a mistake. It is very warm and I'm gonna come back with some 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 sun on my face after this hike and I just want to thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna to start off by making a bold statement. And my bold statement is that men, male leaders, have the key role to play in creating safe inclusive, equitable workspaces. And that by doing so, they will unlock the power of diversity, innovation, and they will create a positive legacy for themselves. That's my bold statement. This is the month of March. It's hard to believe, it feels like May. This is the month of March, which is Women's History Month in the United States. International Women's Day was at the beginning of the month. And just a couple of days ago was Equal Pay Day. Equal Pay Day marks the time of year that the average U.S. woman has to work beyond December 31st of the previous year to make what her male counterparts would have made by that December 31st. So... There's that, and that's why in March, I'm talking about, we're talking about the concept of privilege. Ready? To get into this fraught topic of privilege, I want to tell a story about a post I saw on Twitter just the day before yesterday. A woman posted about how in her workplace, a co-worker grabbed the front of her N95 mask, pulled it straight up from her face and let it snap back onto her. And in, you know, the scant characters that she has to work with on Twitter, she really expressed her dismay about being treated in such a way in the workplace after working from home, after getting through COVID. That's the kind of behavior that was waiting for her at the office. And as I scroll down below that woman's story, I saw comment after comment by other women sharing similar workplace experiences, similar stories of harassment and, frankly, assault. And as I stood there with my phone in my hand, I felt concern and sadness for the original poster. She didn't deserve that. I felt some happiness that she had some solidarity and support from other women. And I felt concern for the leader of that organization, of that workplace. What was that leader doing to either intentionally or unintentionally create or allow a situation like something where something like that could happen? And those questions and emotions, of course, got me thinking about the notion of privilege, this fraught concept that indicates that some of us have more luck than others. Another word for it is unearned privilege. And in general, men have more luck, more privilege than others. And a lot of men in particular will deny that privilege exists or start spouting what about isms. Well, what about when I struggled, when I got bullied, whatever it is. Well, let's just make it clear, we're talking about relative privilege. Yes, I've worked really hard to get to where I have gotten. Yes, I've had to deal with workplace bullies. But we really can't deny, when we really listen to and believe women, that women have a more challenging time in the workplace on average than men do. Because this topic of privilege is so fraught and controversial, it can paralyze leaders 
It can prevent allyship. And it kind of leaves people by the side of the trail. It doesn't keep everybody included. It doesn't keep everybody moving forward. It can be challenging for men to deal with and talk about privilege because the rules of the man box and the rules of old strength leadership reinforce the norm, the paradigm of oppression and the creation of in-groups and out-groups. And as men, we're kind of automatically slotted into an in-group, at least one layer of the in-group, that affords us a little safety and security. It can be easy to just relax into that role and let that be the de facto role that we take. Dealing with privilege, dealing with inequity at work, pushes back against that role and involves a little bit of status risk. But if you want to be a leader, you have to take this on. We can't just leave people by the side of the trail. It's not just, and it's not good business. So what can male leaders do when they're ready to step out of the comfort zone and break up the status quo? One, you can set an example. And it turns out you don't necessarily have to be a rabble rouser to set an example that shows that you're creating an inclusive workspace. A study by Catalyst showed that in a team where leaders just listened openly to their employees, the employees were more likely to confront sexism and racism and bullying on their own. So just by being present and listening openly, you can help create a workplace that engages everyone. Second, when you're ready for a little bit more of a challenge, you can make sure that the cultural expectations are very clear and set from the get-go as part, of, as part of onboarding, as part of ongoing trainings, and as your conversations, your day-to-day -day conversations. What is that culture about? What does your workplace culture accept? What does it not accept? And last, I encourage leaders to address matters of equity and inclusion and privilege, even if there doesn't appear to be a problem. For example, you could share this video with your work team. You could mention equal pay day. You could pay attention to women's stories on Twitter and share them in a meeting and what came up for you, what feelings came up for you. Let's bring it out into the open. So hopefully as you've been following along with me on this hike, you feel committed to not leaving anybody behind on the trail and you're ready to take some actions. I'm gonna put the link to the Break the Bias website, which is associated with International Women's Day. That's the theme, Break the Bias. I'll put the link in the description below. You can share that with your team. I'm also going to put a link to the request form for my simple one-page Bulletproof Your Leadership handout. That handout is the product of conversations with leaders from all around the world who are building strong, safe, equitable work teams. And it just has three lists of simple bulleted suggestions. Well. Not all of them are simple. Some of them are pretty ambitious. But there's definitely simple ones as well. And you can take those on so that you can be a leader knowing that everybody in your team feels like they belong, feels safe from harm, feels ready to engage, and feels ready to tackle the 21st century challenges that aren't gonna stop and they're gonna need you. They're gonna need your transformational leadership. So let's do this. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Let's take another look at Granite Mountain there in the background.